Hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel. So I've got for you all today my 10 essential Star Wars Legends comics. Every Star Wars fan should read. It's a companion video to my 10 essential Star Wars Legends books. Every fan should read. Check that out if you haven't. I will also be doing a canon one as well that goes with this series. So make sure you like the video and you subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. So this list will include mini series as well as full blown comic series. And they are also not in recommended order like the one I recommend the most or least. They're just in the order of when they take place on the timeline. So if you wanted to read these chronologically, you would start with number one and then end with number 10. All right, without any further ado, let's just get into the video. So we're starting out this list with what is actually the earliest Star Wars comic you can read, and that is Dawn of the Jedi. Dawn of the Jedi was written by John Ostrander with pencils by Jan Durasima, and it tells of the origin story of the Jedi back when they were the Jedi Order before the split between Jedi and Sith. It takes place almost 26,000 years before episode one. So this is a story that won't feel like anything else in Star Wars you have read. And with that comes some very interesting art, some really cool images, and also a story that's just kind of bonkers. The characters are pretty fascinating. They're all kind of pre-evolutions of what we eventually, you know, see more commonly in the Old Republic era and then in the prequel era. The one thing that's disappointing about this series is it was coming out while Disney acquired Star Wars in 2012 and eventually it was canceled in 2014 when all of Star Wars Legends got, you know, pushed to the side for a new Star Wars canon. So the series never truly wraps up. It does have three complete story arcs and they're all very, very good. Still though, because there's nothing really like this in Star Wars besides, you know, one tie-in novel, I do feel like this is an essential side to Star Wars comics. This is something that every Star Wars fan should read to kind of understand those early days and what they might have done with the origins of the Jedi and the Sith. So the second essential Star Wars comic book series you should read is Tales of the Jedi. Tales of the Jedi was written by Tom Beitch and Kevin J. Anderson and follows the adventures of Ulic Keldroma, Nomi Sunrider, and Exar Kun, three characters that became synonymous with 90 Star Wars EU and characters that left an imprint and a mark all the way in to the New Republic era in the books and comics you read post Return of the Jedi. This series is very 90s though, so it might not be everyone's cup of tea, and it does start out relatively safe, but I do think as you push through this series, it becomes one of the most rewarding of any of the Star Wars comic series out there. The arcs for the characters are very good, and those three characters in particular, when you're done reading the series, they will become an indelible part of your Star Wars journey. There's iconic conflicts in the series, big twists and turns, epic battles, and with this being the first long-running Dark Horse comic series. It is a piece of Star Wars history that I think every fan needs to have read. The third Star Wars Legends comic series that every single fan should read is the Knights of the Old Republic comic series. KOTOR ran for 52 issues and was written by John Jackson Miller. I would also include Knights of the Old Republic War, which was an epilogue series. Knights of the Old Republic was a prequel to the video game of the same name, and this time focused on the apprentice Zane Carrick, a Padawan of the Jedi Order, who is framed for the Padawan Massacre by the mysterious members of the Jedi Covenant. There's lots of great tie-in to the Old Republic video games here, you have a lot of great Jedi stuff, you have some Mandalorian stuff that's pretty awesome. And the characters here, especially Zane, are pretty underrated when you talk about the Old Republic. Everybody wants to talk about the KOTOR video games and then eventually the Old Republic video games and comics and books and tie-in, but the Knights of the Old Republic comic series is an excellent piece of Star Wars, one of the best parts of this era. If you love the Old Republic, especially the Old Republic timeline around the Knights of the Old Republic era, I do think you will really love this series. The next essential Star Wars Legends comic to read is going to be Django Fett Open Seasons. Django Fett Open Seasons is a mini-series revolving around the titular character of Django Fett, and it ties in heavily to the Bounty Hunter video game, which did come out at the same time. Open Seasons most notably reveals how Fett became a Mandalorian warrior and how he was recruited by Count Dooku. With it only being four issues long, it's a quick, breezy, but effective tie-in that adds a lot to the lore and it really enhances a character that's pretty awesome in the films, but doesn't have much story there. The fifth essential Star Wars Legends comic 
you should be reading is going to be the pinnacle for a lot of Star Wars Legends comic readers, and that is Star Wars 1998, eventually known as Star Wars Republic. Republic ran for 83 issues and was written by a variety of writers with a variety of artists. This was a huge series. The series started with some cool stories about Kyoti Mundi and members of the Jedi Council really enhancing a lot of the side characters in The Phantom Menace, but it really took off and became notable when it introduced Quinlan Voss, who was a background character in The Phantom Menace and really turned him into an iconic, beloved part of Star Wars comics. And then when the series got into the Clone Wars multimedia initiative, there were so many iconic stories and moments like the Battle of Jabim that became synonymous with the storytelling around that initiative. Not to mention characters like Alpha who became some of the most iconic clones in the entire story. Republic really did for the prequels what the original Star Wars Marvel comic series in the 70s and 80s did for the original trilogy. It began before the prequels even started and carried through the release of all of them, eventually even continuing into and transforming into the Dark Times series after the films ended. If you're a prequel fan, this is one of the most essential prequel legend stories you could possibly read in any format, and you should absolutely have read Republic. Speaking of the original Star Wars Marvel comics, it is essential to have at least checked out some of this series. Now, I'm not going to say every Star Wars fan needs to read all 115 issues of this massive, gigantic, long-running series, but these Star Wars Marvel comics from 77 to 86 are a piece of Star Wars history. For all intents and purposes, this was the first ever piece of Star Wars expanded universe storytelling. Sure, we got the original Star Wars novelization that came out in 1976, but the Star Wars Marvel comic series was the first Star Wars EU material to ever go beyond the events of the film, tell stories that took place after that movie ended. But it really was the success of the Star Wars Marvel comics that made George Lucas think, hey, maybe there really is a demand for stories outside of the films. There's also a lot of very interesting characters added to the mythology here, like Jackson and eventually Lady Lumia, who is very important for the Star Wars books, not to mention a character like Valance, who has become popular in Star Wars canon comics. There's a lot of early Star Wars history here, so I think every fan should have at least checked this series out in some form. <laughs> The next essential Star Wars Legends comic series you should read is going to be the X-Wing Rogue Squadron series. Written by Michael A. Stackpole and a variety of other authors and artists, this series began at the end of the Rebellion era and carried all the way in to the New Republic era. Now you might be wondering what's the difference between this series and eventually the X-Wing book series, and this is actually a prequel series to the X-Wing book series. It of course stars Wedge Antilles and a variety of other pilots who eventually become mainstays in the X-Wing book series. And this series actually began a year before the first X-Wing Rogue Squadron book came out. But also don't think of this as something you only should read if you're interested in the X-Wing books. This is certainly an essential Star Wars Legends comic series for anybody who enjoys New Republic military or Rebellion military stories. It ran for 37 issues, so there's a good chunk of story here. And with Wedge becoming one of the most important characters in the New Republic era and beyond, I highly recommend you check out this series. <laughs> You all knew this one was coming at some point. You should absolutely check out Dark Empire if you are a Star Wars fan. Dark Empire was written by Tom Veitch with art by Cam Kennedy, and it was a six-issue comic book miniseries where somehow Palpatine returned. Joking aside, there actually is a reason for why Palpatine returned in this story. And this story, kind of like Tales of the Jedi, is very, very 90s, but there's a lot of Star Wars history here. This is the first Star Wars comic book to come out in the 90s EU era, the first Star Wars Dark Horse comic comic book as well. So even though it is a bit dated and some people really don't like the story, I'm more positive on the story because I love Star Wars history. This miniseries really could be credited for everything we got in Dark Horse. This is the thing that relaunched Star Wars comics and it absolutely is one of the most important and re-referenced stories in the Star Wars EU. <laughs> 
The next one I would say is essential is going to be Crimson Empire. Crimson Empire is a 90s comic book miniseries that ran six issues and was written by Mike Richardson and Randy Stradley with art by Paul Gulacy. It tells the story of Kier Kanos and Karner Jax, two of the Emperor's royal guards. But when Karner betrays the Emperor and orders the murder of the Imperial guards, Kier must escape to carry out his duty to avenge his master and bring down Jax once and for all. Not only is this one of the most iconic 90s e stories, but this is something that's pretty unique across all of Star Wars. In canon and also in other Legends material, we really have not seen any character be given to the Imperial Royal Guard. And that's why the series has always stood out to me. It's very, very cool. It's certainly more of a badass series than it is something that's heavy on riveting storytelling, but I certainly think it's worth your time for a very unique side of Star Wars. And like Dark Empire, it does have two sequel books that do diminish in quality, although I would definitely recommend you check out the second one if you're interested in this one. And the final essential Star Wars Legends comic series I think you should read is going to be Star Wars Legacy. We talked a lot about on this video the kind of unique sides of Star Wars comics, the other eras and characters in the Star Wars universe that most Star Wars media just ignores. Well, Legacy is another one of those eras. It's an era all to itself. Legacy takes place from 130 to 138 ABY, which is approximately 138 years after the events of Star Wars Episode IV. And it features all new characters and all new factions that yes, are evolutions of things we've seen before, but it, it really establishes a really new side of Star Wars something that is fresh and an alternative take. Of course, since this is trying to be a mainline Star Wars story, it stars a Skywalker, this time Cade Skywalker. Cade Skywalker is not your traditional Skywalker. He has substance abuse problems. He's basically a pirate. He's not that likable really at all in the first half of the story, and you really have to read the story and learn and grow with him. In a lot of ways, this is a very edgy book because of that, and some people don't like that, but I, I appreciate that this is a side of Star Wars that completely expands and tries to change and go for something different. The book is once again written by Star Wars comic legend John Ostrander, who also takes factions like the Fell Empire and changes and evolves them, as well as an evolution of the Sith with the Sith Lord Darth Krait, the leader of the One Sith. With Star Wars Legacy, you also have to read the epilogue series Star Wars Legacy War, which really does end the series for all intents and purposes. There are some awesome action sequences, some incredible art and splash pages, some really interesting concepts, and I think characters that eventually you do grow to love and appreciate. This series might not necessarily be for everyone, but I really love it, and I think a lot of you are going to. I would definitely say it's an essential Star Wars Legends read. Well, thank you all so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for the essential Star Wars canon comics you should read and then eventually I will be doing an essential Star Wars video games you should play. Keep an eye out on the channel for more content just like this. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you all next time.